since I was the only person from a business perspective, we also need to think about distribution. How do you reach people? Right? And at the end of the day, I figured out that no, rock band won't work. And I came to know that after I came back to India, leaving everything behind. So, the second scariest moment, right? Okay. The idea that I had of starting a company, I realized after coming back that it will not work. So, now what can I do? And <clears throat> that time I realized that iPhone is a pretty good market to be in. Like, since you have to sell online, you can just create a game, send it back, travel it to other stores, and people will start downloading all over the world. Right? And since it's a phone, the complexity of the game doesn't have to be really high. Right? So that's how a squash happened. So the one lakh rupees that my father gave me, I bought an iMac. Right? And an iPhone. So iMac was like around 70,000 rupees, and iPhone was like 30,000 rupees. And that I cost and it was one lakh rupees. So I didn't have, and I I'm originally from Amravati, it's a small town uh, close to Nagpur. And uh, I wanted to start the company in Pune because I've been in Pune for a long time, did my engineering from here. And I didn't have a home, right? So I had to rent it out. And if I spent one lakh rupees there, then how would I how will I pay my rent? So I actually shifted in an apartment of my friend and we took some loan from him, which I haven't returned until today. <laughs> and uh, that's how the company started. I had one table, one iMac, one iPhone. And then I started thinking, like, okay, now I have to create a game. What game should I create? And right from day one, we had the vision right. We wanted to create games that are hugely entertaining, that are global, universal, and I have this inclination towards both technology and art. So there's a strong belief that we have in the company that technology and art often creates magic. So these were the three things that we had in mind in the artists when we created the game. So the trailer that you guys saw that was the first game that and uh, as first came out, it started giving us uh, some amount of money, giving us, giving me that some amount of money. So I was, at least was able to pay the loan. I was able to like, at least fund the two day, two time meals that I used to take. And, but when I released a squash, I would say that was the second best day of my life. There are many, but yeah, and in my career, I would say, second best day was hugely rewarding, hugely rewarding. I mean, that was the moment I thought, okay, people are playing my game. This is the game that I have played. So the, the, the contribution that I had was equivalent to this room, right? I was not this part, but the entire game I created myself. And people bashed it. You know, people, I mean, there were both kinds of people. There were people from who said that. This is the worst game that I've played. It's crappy. And there were some people who said that this is the best game. I had a lot of fun. And the bad reviews hurt. You know, when you create a game, bad reviews hurt. But when you are creating this game, the lesson that you should give yourself is be open to criticism. It is crazy hurting. You know, if you put so much effort in creating a game, and when people bash it, it will like dishearten you. But don't get disheartened, but take it as a learning. Don't panic. In fact, it happens still today. I mean, when we create games, there are it is it is humanly not possible to create a game which is perfect by seven. Not even people will. I mean, even the best best companies won't have all five star games. There will be people who will say bad things about your game. So be open to that. Take it as a learning. Don't panic. Don't feel bad about yourself. Right? This is just a start. Take it as a stepping stone to what you're going to create next. And after that game, I actually started just reading one star reviews. 
I never had that result. But the importance that I gave to was the one star and the two star. What we will do in my Right? So after that, uh, we did a lot of things. We created Super Badminton. And one, one thing that I had in mind when I was starting the company was to create a company that creates something which is really, really unique in the market. So that's why it was the world's first squash game apparently. And squash is not very popular. So you can see that the world's first squash game we created. The second game that I created, or second game was created by a team. Um, so we got a couple of artists on board. Um, and uh, there's an interesting story to that as well. And CMD in fact played a very, very good critical role in, in getting CMD. And that's how our relationship with CMD started. It started during that time, continues in today, and I, I guess going stronger in the future. So, you know, at that time I was a single person team, and as you know, Squash gave us barely some money to be able to do it, pay my rent and things like that. And when I started Super Badminton, I wanted it to be much more complex game, right? Just like everybody of you, everybody here wants to play complex games. Graphics in Denzel and a lot of fun to play. So I thought, okay, you saw in as far as there was no characters. Right? So I thought, in Super Badminton, let's have 3D characters. Let's have 3D animation. Right? And uh, I thought that, okay, uh, let me try and learn Maya, for example. Let me create 3D characters myself. And just like I created that spot, I'll create the entire super animation myself. So I sat and started learning Maya and quickly realized that it will take me a lot of time to actually learn this and then finally create the game. And <clears throat> uh, I didn't have a lot of time. I mean, till today, when we work, we we take into consideration the amount of time. We we make an assumption that we don't have a lot of time. So that brings incredible speed with which our team works. It's crazy. Everybody's in hurry. Everybody's in urgency. Yeah. So uh, I realized that I can't do it, and I didn't have money. So how do I create the game? And that's when I started approaching a lot of uh, educational and animation institutes back in Pune. I thought that we could have some partnership with them, uh, during which I'm able to give internship to their students and we should work on real life projects and things like that. So I talked to Matt, for example, I'm not sure what we have heard of it. I talked to that because one more, and I talked to C Media. So, I was like, do what the hell are you saying? It won't do all things like that. So really they didn't understand what gaming is. I think they were making the business of making money and things like that. And actually that was also the first acquisition offer that we had. Hey, why don't you join us? Create <laughs> games from here. And I was like, no, I just started and I need to do a lot of things. And this is the similar answer that I received from almost all the animation institute except CMD. So when I first came to CMD, they actually understood what I'm trying to do. Right? And, and they said that yes, we would support you uh, in, in creating what you're trying to create. We have a couple of really great students, uh, and that was like a really huge relief. And in return, what I gave them, I started teaching here. I, I got here for some amount of time, for like I, I guess three years or so. I was like actually visiting faculty, I was using teaching design and development. 